Hi, gang. I'm Robin Schneider, and I'm happy to be guest lecturing on Zoe Hong's channel this week. I teach Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop for fashion design at Otis College, and I've got a bunch of courses on LinkedIn Learning. In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw a button-down shirt flat in Adobe Illustrator. And just a heads up, this video is going to be a little more of an advanced video because if I do a super beginning one, we will never get through the shirt in the amount of time I have allotted. So let's get to it. First of all, we are going to use one of Zoe's templates. She's got this great set of flat templates in her Etsy shop. So we are going to grab Zoe's template. I'm going to copy it going to go into the file I already have set up and we are going to paste it. Now before we can work with this we need to turn it into an actual template. It's very dark right now and drawing over it's going to be difficult. So in order to turn it into a template we're going to go to our layers. We're going to double click on the layer that I just pasted into and I'm going to check the little template box. I adjusted the dim images box to 30 percent and I'm going to click OK. And now the image is lighter. We can draw on top of it easily. And it's also locked so that we can work on it without having it move around on us. I'm going to make a new layer. And I want to just show you a couple of file setup things that I do to make the workflow better. I do not like working in the original essentials uh, that comes in the newest version of Illustrator right now. It doesn't give me access to the things that I use the most. So I prefer to drop down and use Essentials Classic, which gives me a lot more of the things that we use, like brushes and symbols, graphic styles. I've also adjusted this and only added the things in these large tabs that I'm going to be using, which is the Stroke Panel, Graphic Styles Panel, which is really important, Layers, and the appearance panel. For now, we'll keep the layers panel on. I turned on my rulers, which is Control or Command R, and now I'm going to zoom in super, super close so that we can drag out a guideline to work with. And to do that, you're going to go to your black arrow, click inside the ruler, and just drag out a guideline and place it right in the center of the template. And this part is really important. By having this guideline there, you assure that every time you click on the center, you're clicking on exactly the same center point. If we just eyeballed it based on the center line here, there's a lot of wiggle room. So we want to have this guide, and we also always want to make sure that your guides are locked. To do that, you're going to right click and make sure that your guides are locked. Here you can see it says unlock guides, meaning my guide is locked. Um, I just unlocked it so I can show you, right click, see lock guides, click on that, and now my guide will not move, and we're set to draw. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and we are going to draw a button-down shirt, and I want to show you a couple of cool ways that I like to work. We're going to be using the pen tool, and I'm going to go ahead and tear this off and move it over here just so we can access them easily. The way we're going to use the pen tool is grab it, we're going to click, click, click as if we're doing kind of connect the dots. And then we're going to grab the anchor point tool and click and drag to create curves where we need them. That is how we're going to approach this. So let's delete that. I'm going to hit D on my keyboard to reset my default fill and stroke, which is a white fill and a black stroke. And now we can start drawing the collar. With the pen tool, my first click is right here where the neckline meets that center guide. The second click is up on the neck, then down on the shoulder, down to where your collar point is going to be, and close. And that is the basic shape for a collar. Now, it's a little rough, so we're going to go ahead and take an opportunity now to finesse it. If we wanted to move around this point, we would grab the white arrow, and we can make it shorter, we could make it really long, like a 70s collar. But the shape we're going for right now is a trapezoid that is longer in the front and narrower in the back. So it's going right however high it sits up on the neck, sits down on the shoulder over here, and then we have our collar point and this. All right, so with the basic shape, now we can finesse it a little bit. We're going to grab the anchor point tool, and I'm going to curve this just slightly. We're going to match that curve on the bottom so that it's parallel. And then we're going to take and curve this in just the tiniest little bit to give it some life. 
And that is what our collar piece looks like. Now we can go back to the black arrow. We're going to select our collar and reflect it to the other side. We're going to do that by hitting O on the keyboard, so O to reflect, and then hold your Alt or Option key and click right on that center guide we created. Vertical copy. And there's the other side. Now, to make the back piece of the collar, we can use two pieces that are already here, the short line segment on this side and the same one on the other side. So using the white arrow this time, we're going to select the short line segment, hold your shift key, and select the same line segment on the other side. We're going to copy, control or command C, and then click anywhere on your page to release. And now paste in back, which is control or command B for back. Right click, join, right click, join. So now we've got, if we look at our layers, our two front collar pieces and our back piece. Now the back collar piece should always be smiling. So to do that, we're gonna grab the anchor point tool and we're gonna click and drag down a little bit to give it kind of a smile. And we're gonna do the same with the top so that they are parallel to each other. And that is how simple it is to draw a beautiful collar. Now, I'm gonna take this collar layer and I'm gonna lock it so it doesn't move on us. I'm gonna click on our template layer and then create a new layer that is sandwiched in between the collar and the template layer and we can start drawing the rest of the bodice now. All right, so with the pen tool, I'm gonna start inside the collar, just behind the collar at high point shoulder is my first click. My second click, low shoulder, under the armhole, and then down to where my hem is gonna be. Now I need to finesse this and we're gonna curve it. You know, before I do that though, I don't like looking at this green, so I'm gonna double click on this layer and we're gonna change the color to blue. Much better. All right, with the anchor point tool, we're gonna to click inside the armhole and give that a little bit of a curve. And I wanna give some shape to the shirt, so we're gonna click a little bit above the waist and also pull that in. And now we can manipulate these two handles to finesse the shape a little bit more. So maybe we'll pull it in a tiny bit more and we're gonna grab the bottom handle and pull it back out so we don't get a weird flip on the bottom. And by playing with these two handles, you can really easily finesse the shape of your shirt and get a beautiful smooth curve here without being a master of the pen tool. And that's something I really like approaching this way. So let's go back to the black arrow. Now we're gonna select this, O to reflect, Alt or Option click on the center guide, vertical, copy, and now back to the black arrow. We're gonna select both sides, right click, join, right click, join. And the bodice is almost done now. All we need to do is curve the bottom so we have a little smile going down there too. So with the anchor point tool, I'm just gonna click and drag straight down on the center line, that bottom hem, so we get a little smile. And that takes care of the bodice. Let's do the sleeves, and then we'll get back to more detail on the bodice. For the sleeve, we're gonna use the white arrow, and we're gonna take advantage of the fact that we already have this armhole shape. So I'm gonna click on that to select it, copy it, release, paste in front, which is Control or Command F, and then right click, join. And it makes this really weird little piece here. But that's okay. What it did was it gave us a little closed path that is kind of a puzzle piece that fits perfectly inside the armhole. See, and I'll move it back. And now we're gonna turn it into a sleeve by taking the add an anchor point tool and adding two anchor points along the straight edge. So anywhere along the straight edge will do. And then we're gonna to switch to the white arrow, click in between those two sections and just drag it down to the wrist. And that gives you your sleeve. Now, this is a very narrow sleeve, so we're gonna beef it up a little bit by grabbing again the anchor point tool. And we're just gonna click and drag and flush that sleeve out a little bit. And we can do it down here too. You just wanna be careful that you don't end up with this balloony looking sausage kind of shape. But uh, we can give it as much of a sleeve cap up here as we want. And also, this is a really tiny wrist down here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and widen that just a little bit and adjust the shape. Now, just like with the hem, the bottom of the shirt sleeve can have a tiny curve to it as well. So I'm just going to click and drag that out a tiny bit. All right, while we're here, let's finish up this sleeve. It's going to have a cuff. And to do that, I'm going to take the pen tool and I'm going to decide how wide I want my cuff. And I'm just going to draw a line segment. I'm going to grab that anchor point tool again, curve the line segment so it matches the curve on the bottom. We're going to get rid of the fill. And now I'm going to select both this line segment and the shirt, and the, sorry, and the shirt sleeve. We're going to divide them. To do that, we're going to go up to Window, Pathfinder. And what we want to play with over here is Pathfinder Divide, which is this bottom left one. We're going to click on it, and then we're going to right-click, ungroup. And now we've got two separate pieces that can be filled with two separate colors. All right. Now, a sleeve cuff is a little bit tighter than the sleeve itself. So to add some volume to the sleeve, we're going to, again, grab the Add an Anchor Point tool. We're going to click a little bit above the cuff. And with the arrow key on the keyboard, you are going to nudge it out one click. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to just nudge it out one click. So it gives that little bit of kind of fullness coming into the sleeve. Now, if we were going to do stitches on everything today, I would add that now. But I think uh, I might not have time to do stitches. So we're just going to select the sleeve, group it together so it stays together in one piece. And if you look at your layers, this really helps with the layers panel organization. We'll zoom out a little bit. And now I can just reflect this sleeve to the other side. So we'll select it, O to reflect, Alt or Option click on the center guide, vertical, copy, and there's my sleeve on the other side. All right, let's do some more of the bodice here. We're going to take this piece that we created for the bodice, and we are going to fill it with gray. And if I go to my graphic styles, you can see I've already got a gray set up there. And then I'm going to copy this, paste in front, which paste it exactly in the same place, right in front. And I'm going to hit D on my keyboard to restore my default black and white fill. So if you look at my layers, you can see that the first layer is the gray, and then there's the white version of it directly on top. We're going to take that white version and grab the Convert Anchor Point tool, grab it right along that center guideline, and drag it down so that we can see through it to the collar. So you can see there's the white one on top of the gray one. Now also, looking at this with the collar, I am noticing that the collar is sitting a little bit high, right? Or the bodice is sitting a little bit low, however you look at it. I'm going to take my white arrow, and I'm going to drag through to select all these anchor points of the bodice. And with my arrow key on my keyboard, I'm going to nudge them up just a little bit so that the collar is sitting really nicely on the shoulders without a big gap here. We just want that sort of like one point worth to make a really beautiful looking flat. All right. And if you see something like this happen while you're working, don't worry about it. It's a strange Illustrator glitch. It's done it for a while. It won't print that way. But it just sort of, for some reason, wants to fill the little corners in with black. All right, let's zoom back out a little bit and continue on. Since we have our shirt that has some shape to it, it means that there must be darts somewhere here, right? So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to select this. And I'm going to get rid of the fill just so we can see what we're doing. And here's why we use Zoe's template. Zoe's template has dart placements for us. She's got uh, uh, whatchamacallit, a princess line over here, one from the shoulder, one from the arm. She's got darts. She's even got a French dart, which is my personal favorite. So yay, Zoe. And let's go ahead and do a princess for this. Now, all you have to do to draw a princess is we're going to click up here at this anchor point. And we're going to click down where it ends on the bottom. And then we're going to grab the anchor point tool. And we're going to go ahead and shape it using the anchor point tool. 
So I dragged it out, and now I can play with these handles a little bit to make it go out more or in more and get the shape that I want to see. And there it is, following that perfectly. Now we'll take this and reflect it to the other side. So O to reflect, Alt or Option click on the center guide, vertical, copy, and there is, or there are, our princess seams to justify the shape of the shirt. So let's go back to the layers panel. We're gonna select the one on the bottom and I'm gonna give that my great graphic style again because it's the back. And then we're gonna go grab the one on top of it, which should be my white one. And I can just go to my default graphic style for that. All right, now I'm looking down here and I see I went a little bit too, too low on this. So I have a couple of options. I can either take my white arrow, select both of those points, and use my arrow key to just nudge them up a little bit till they're back where I want them. And I think in this case, that is absolutely the way to go. All right, we can't have a button-down shirt without a placket. And a placket is super simple. It's basically just a rectangle. So I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool and draw a rectangle straight down the center front of the shirt. And the size of the placket, you know, it's a visual. So I'm gonna draw one that looks appropriate to me. And then you wanna make sure that it is aligned center. And the easiest way to do that is to select the placket, hold your shift key and also select the front of the shirt. Then one more time, click on the front of the shirt. That is gonna make it the thing that we align to or the key object. Now, if we go to align and click center, it's gonna make sure that the placket is centered on the shirt. All right, the next thing we need are buttons. And it just so happens that I've got one here in my symbols. There we go. And the scale, how does that look? That looks pretty good. The button should be about a third of the width of the placket. I don't wanna see giant clown buttons. I get that from a lot of my students. Um, buttons should be to scale. All right. So I'm gonna delete this button for the moment and I'm gonna show you an easy way to work. We could turn on this placket layer and turn off everything else. It's one way to do it. Or we can isolate it. And I'm big on isolating things. And the way to do that is just uh, select the object you wanna isolate, right click, isolate selected path. So now I've got the only thing active on my page is this placket that I drew. So now I can go ahead and drag out one of my buttons and place it where I want it. And now I need to decide how many buttons I want. So I can either keep dragging them out or I can just copy this one and then paste in front as many times as I need buttons. And I want seven. So since I already have one, we'll go paste in front five more times. So control F, one, two, three, four, five, sorry, six more times. And if you look at the layers, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven buttons. We are gonna take one of the buttons and put it on the bottom where we want the bottom button to go. And in the case of a shirt, right, it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. It is gonna go about here because we still need to be able to tuck in the shirt, right? And now we're gonna select all of these buttons. And I can do this from the layers panel. And with all the buttons selected, I'm gonna go back to align. I'm gonna make sure that it's sent to align to selection, this top one here. And then I'm gonna align center. And then right below it is distribute objects and it's going to distribute all my buttons evenly within that group. So now I've got them aligned and distributed. Once I've done that, and I always do this, I group them together. So I shouldn't have released that, let's undo. So I've got all my buttons selected. I'm going to align, distribute, right click, and then group. Now, because I'm dealing with symbols, it's not giving me the option to group. It's a weird illustrator quirk. Uh, it's done it for a while. I'm hoping that at some point soon that will be fixed. But meanwhile, in that case, if it won't let you group it that way, we will have to group it a different way. So we're gonna grab all the buttons, and you always want buttons grouped. You never want loose buttons floating around your page. If you can't right-click group, 
you can go object group or control or command G. So we're going to do it that way. And now all my buttons are going to move as a single object. So I'm going to go ahead and put them back and align them to my shirt. So it's nice that they're in one group and always buttons need to be centered along the center line. To exit isolation mode, all you need to do is double click on a blank area of the page. So double click and I've exited isolation mode. So that takes care of pretty much the front of my shirt except for possible stitches. We'll just add some on the hem because we do need to save time. So we'll copy, paste in front, and then I'm gonna nudge up a couple of clicks. And then again, back to my graphic styles where I have stitches already set up. And with one click, I get the perfect size stitches with the right stroke and no fill. And that's the beauty of graphic styles. All right, so let's call the front of our shirt done. We're gonna select the whole thing and we are going to group it together. So right click and group. And now we can do the back. Now for the back of the shirt, Zoe gave us a back, which is terrific. Um, and we could go ahead and, and move this over to the back and use it, but it's not really necessary. What we can do is make the back from the front. So I'm gonna hold my Alt or Option key down and I'm gonna drag this out of the way. So there's a copy, except look, I forgot to <laughs> I forgot to unlock my collar. So we're going to delete that. And we're going to go back here and ungroup this. We're going to go to our layers and we are going to unlock the collar. And now I can select this whole thing and right click group. All right. So we'll alt or option drag and move this out of the way. And now we're going to turn this into the back. And again, we're going to do that by going into isolation mode. So we're going to right click and isolate selected group. And now we're working inside the group shirt without having to ungroup it. We're gonna start by deleting everything that we don't need on the front or that we don't need on the back. We don't need the placket. We don't need the buttons. And here's why we opted to do them in one, one group. So with one click, we can delete them all. We don't need the front collar or this collar, and we don't need the front of the shirt. And now we can select the back part of the shirt and hit D for default to turn it back into white. If we want to adjust the shape a little bit of, um, excuse me, the princess seam, because you see it's not quite so curvy on the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete one of them. And we're gonna edit the curve on this one, again, using the anchor point tool. And I'm just gonna kind of flatten this a little bit so it's not quite as steep as the one on the front was. And now we're gonna select this and reflect it to the other side so that they mirror each other. So O to reflect, Alt or Option click on the center guide. And I'm doing it, see how when I did it here, the word guide didn't pop up? So I'm gonna move either above or below so that the word guide pops up and I know I'm exactly on that guide. So copy to reflect it to the other side. So there's the back. We still want to keep these stitches there. And the only other thing we need to do now is add a placket to the sleeve. Now, uh, in the interest of time, I've already got a placket here saved as a symbol. So I'm just going to drag that out and we're going to use that one. In order to work with it though, I'm going to right click and break link to symbol. And we're going to put this placket in place. So we're gonna grab it and we're gonna move it into place. And what I'm doing is making sure that the bottom left-hand corner of the placket is hitting where I want it to along this seam where the cuff meets the sleeve. So let's move this so it sits right about there. And then we're going to hit, click R on the keyboard for rotate. I'm gonna click right here on that point we discussed and make it our rotation point and then just click and drag to rotate this around so it's going up the sleeve in the right direction. And to finish this off, I'm gonna grab the white arrow and I'm gonna grab just this anchor point right here and I'm gonna drag this line straight down to the cuff, making sure that I keep it aligned with the placket. 
and I'm going to do the same thing with the stitches here. And now all I need is a button. So we'll go back to our symbols and grab a button, put it right there. And let's zoom out a little bit. So now we've got our sleeve with our placket. We're going to select all the elements that make up that sleeve. I'm going to group it together. We'll delete the other sleeve. And now I'm going to reflect this one into place. So O to reflect, Alt or Option click on the center guide, vertical, copy. There's the other sleeve. And we'll double click to exit isolation mode. And let me turn off that template layer so we can get a better look at all of this now. So here is the back of our shirt. Here is the front of our shirt. And everything is a closed path the way we drew it so it can be filled. And what I like to do when I lay out my flats is select the front and the back, group them together. And then again, I have this super duper graphic style that is going to put a two point outline just around the perimeter of everything. And what's cool about this is if I decide to move it around, the outline kind of moves with it, which is really nice. So please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new today and drop your questions in the comments. Remember, no one masters these skills overnight. It just takes a little bit of practice, but I promise it's worth it. For more Adobe for Fashion, check out my courses on LinkedIn Learning and visit my YouTube channel. And if you're interested in additional training, I'm now doing private instruction via Zoom. And lastly, if you want to speed up your workflow, check out my new Etsy shop. I've got some beautiful Photoshop fur brushes and Illustrator graphic styles. You'll find links in the description box below.